struggling to sleep last night, I um, went on TikTok, as we normally do. TikTok has become our version of like uh, counting sheep, even though like the platform is built to stimulate you. So it's actually meant to keep you awake more than help you fall asleep. I bumped uh, across, fell upon um, an interview that Litoya Makene had, or rather snippet of it. And she was speaking about her nine-year marriage to a Zimbabwean man. Um, and how this guy, right after, like a month after they got married, went and he quit his job. And she carried the family for nine years. You know, they had three kids, but he never contributed. And then he became physically and otherwise abusive. And eventually she said, it's enough, 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 enough is enough. And she filed for a divorce. And this guy carried on demanding to live off her. And she ended up, and I think maybe even to this day, 1.4 million rand debt. Because this guy refused to move out of their house and he wasn't contributing at all to the house. Nine year marriage, she's very happy about their three children. But now she's got this debt. And I'm thinking of all the different stories that I've heard from women being scammed by men. Because a lot of us, we obviously know about men being scammed by women. It's actually become a norm. It's not even a big deal. Woman dates a man with means. She expects a girlfriend allowance. We've actually got a term for it. We've got a girlfriend allowance. And you know, but she was there as a rock, helping him in his career. When the same thing happens with a woman, of course, people lose their marbles. Oh, what kind of a man is that? You know, he's got no shame. He's doing the same thing that women do every day that is deemed a norm. And mind you, I'm not endorsing either side. Both are fucked up. People need to make their own money. People need to make their own money. And if you're not making money and you want to stay at home as a man or a woman, you need to add value. You want to hear a story of Ule Toya saying, you know, he was an amazing babysitter. He was amazing with the kids with homework. He used to drive me around everywhere. He used to cook our meals. He used to cook and clean. He used to do laundry. So he was actually adding a lot of value in my life. He helped me with my career. He'd take me to auditions. He'd help me with my script. You know, when I have to practice lines to act on generations, or whatever the case may be, he was there. He was a pillar of strength. But that's not the case. It's people that are leeching. And so many women in the, in the name of marriage or in the name of love. <laughs> and I've said before, love is a mental illness. It numbs rational thoughts. You stop thinking, oh, I love him so much. It makes you do dumb things. Taking out loans for a guy you've barely met. Next thing, it disappears. His phone, the number you have dialed does not exist. And now we must feel sorry for you. Because you made a dumb decision in the name of love. But after that Latoya uh, video, started thinking also about Upabi Mloy, who's currently I still going through this case with Ruan Adams. The guy who claims that they were married because he paid 25,000 rand in Lobol. And Upa, Upa is like, we, we didn't get married, we're not married, we didn't sign anything. But the law doesn't play like that, boy. You know, the guy wants uh, half of her estate. Uh, he says he wants to get divorced. She claims they were never married. He says he paid 25,000 rand lobola. And she, uh, ilobolo rather. And she, um, or she was handed over by her grandmother to him. She's got six properties, two cars, and he wants half of that. And women on social media are losing their minds. What kind of a man is this? And normal. We men deal with stuff like this every day where a woman feels entitled because he also wanted spousal maintenance. 8,500 Rand. Women want that. Mbali Mloj wanted that from Uplekov. I think she wanted 60,000 Rand a month. Nothing wrong, of course. She loved him. She was there for him. Ron Adams is saying the same. You know. Ron Adams is a white man, apparently. Speak about Letoya Makene, a Zimbabwean man, speaking about Pabi Mloy, white man. In a country where a lot of black women say things like, oh, black South African men are so useless. You're going to catch flames from foreign men, from white men. You're going to see flames and no one's going to feel sorry for you. In the Pabi Mloy case, the story of customary marriage came up and I went back to watch the video on ENCA with a, a lawyer called Ntabi Seng Dubazan, who was breaking down certain things. And I've, I've taken like a short snippet of that video and I'm going to place it, or rather I've placed it on TikTok and on Instagram. 
where she explains something. And mind you, to this day, it is still not clear how this marriage garbage works. And I call it garbage because I'm so anti-marriage. I'm aggressively anti-marriage. And I think people that get married today are stupid. Stupid. Ah, but Penel, you, how is the family meant to grow? How is No, I'm very pro-family. I'm very pro-children being raised in a loving household by mom and dad. But why do you have to get money involved? Why do you have to get lawyers and courts involved? Why do you have to get family members that you probably don't even know that won't be there when things are going sideways involved? You're signing things. You're paying for a honeymoon and this white wedding that costs 200,000 rand. Why? What's stopping you? There was nothing stopping you from having sex with this person. You weren't married to them. There were no courts and lawyers. There was no disrespecting their ancestors. Culture. No. You went around sleeping with people without consulting your elders, without telling your parents. No random uncles came to sit down and say, oh, let's talk because Inganya Laika wants to have sex. You did that on your own, including having children. Now when it's convenient, you want to get married. Oh, but the family nucleus. Fuck you, man. You're stupid. And I'm going to call you out because it's dumb. In fucking 2022. You're not fully religious. You're not fully cultural. You visit this shit when it suits you. And then you want to get married. And then when you go and you get divorced, we must feel sorry for you. Shame. We're not. I'm not. I'm going to be like, Ulaegile. So when Tabi Singh Tubazana was speaking about the case of Ricky Rick and Bianca Naidu, who never got married, but were cohabiting since 2013, I believe. Ricky Rick took his life in February. There was no will. Um, so Bianca Naidu was applying to be an executor or an executrix of his estate. She's, she's won the case, which also is a bit upsetting for me because she didn't win the case on merit. She wanted to be recognized as a wife, even though they never got married. They never signed anything. Uriki Rik didn't pay Lobolo at all. The families may have seen her as a wife, but that doesn't mean anything in a court of law. So how she's won the case is that the Department of Home Affairs, uh, I think the, the master of the high court that was fighting her, Dr. Arun lady, obviously on Home Affairs, they decided to abandon the case. And by technicality and default, she's now the executrix of the estate. Not because she won the case to be recognized as a wife. She wasn't. But now some people are going to cite, but look at what happened to Bianca Nai. No. Cohabitation is not deemed a common law marriage in South Africa. Living with someone for six months or more does not mean you are officially a spouse. If that person dies, you are not entitled to half their assets. You are not entitled to anything. You're no different to just the flatmates they were living with. You can live with someone for 20 years, 30 years, and not get married, and you're entitled to nothing. It's only if you can prove that you are contributing financially to the bond, to buying the furniture, to the house, to the kids' school fees. It's only then with that proof where you can say, I'd like to get my contribution back. But that doesn't entitle you to their assets, the 50%, only to what you put in. 20 years. But you can meet someone last week. Last week, go to home affairs this week, sign. Soon as you sign, you're married. And if you die tomorrow, you met them last week, you sign, tomorrow you die, that person is entitled to 50% of your things. That's the technical legal bullshit we have in this country. Not rooted in rationality, practicality, nothing. Umjit has been married for five years. He's had a side chick for 10 years. He lives at the side chick's house. She cooks his meals. She listens to his problems. They have the most sex. They maybe even have children. The woman that he's married to is going to be the one entitled to his 50%. Not this woman he's been with for 10 years. That's the law. And people don't know the law. And that's where lawyers come and they get corrupt and they make money of people that don't know. And magistrates and judges come in and they rule on a masimba. That they themselves know are not rooted in practicality and rational thinking. Then there's the customary law aspect. Which in time you're saying covered. And again, it's still not clear. WHP, Lerato, WHP committed suicide. Lerato went and won a case where WHP's family said, would know, but there was no marriage ceremony. There was no, and the magistrate ruled, but there was a transfer. Like the woman was handed over and Lobolo was paid. And they were like, but that's not enough because there was a checklist. These are the things that must be done. And they, it didn't satisfy, but they ruled in Lerato's favor. And Nuntabi Singh was saying, once a man pays a lobolo, you are married. 
The families can decide that Ilobo was 10,000 Rand, but even a pot payment is good enough. 2,000 Rand, even if he pays 100 Rand, and even if it is not documented, written anywhere on paper, you guys are now legally married. So in my example, you meet a girl last week. Today, you don't go to home affairs, you go to her family. You guys sit and you speak, you're like, Ilobo global and Fung and all they agree. And there's witnesses, you've got your mates, they've got witnesses. And then you say, as an act of good faith, I want to leave 200 Rand. On that day, you are legally married. Fuck. You don't have to pay the rest of the amount. You don't have to have a ceremony. There doesn't need to be. You are married. And if someone can show pictures, ah, oh, just sat with the family of what, what, yo, my boy just laid down 200 Rand. That is proof and evidence that a marriage took place. Not an engagement, not a promise to marry. Married. If you go to the bank and you put down a deposit on a house, on a car, you still owe a lot of money. But from that day, that is yours to occupy and enjoy. And when you go to court and the bank wants to kick you out, you're like, this is my home. This is my car. That's the fight. And what saddens me is, of course, in this conversation, we're treating a woman like property. I'm not a property. I'm not being bought. You are. We're not having real conversations. Why is a man in 2022 paying a woman's family to marry her? When women are empowered and liberated, we have gender equality. Women are not oppressed. They are not lesser beings. So what kind of culture, what kind of law endorses this thing? It's a, it's a payment. That's why it's huge fights in courts. And that's why the fights are for the property, the money, the assets. It's because the woman herself is seen as a property who must be paid for. Like I'm renting a, a flat. Like I'm hiring a car. And then we have to prove what if a woman comes to my family? I want to marry Penn. My mom is like, ooh, sis, you can marry him for 20,000. Okay, ma, I'd like to transfer 2,000 rand in your account. We are officially married, are we not? Or it only applies the one way, which means there's a gender bias, which means this law that we have is bullshit. And why are customary law issues? Pabim Loy, Ju Jabba, even now, Uto Riki Rik, Nabu Bianca Knight. Why are customary uh, marriage things being discussed in a western court where are the chiefs where are the kings where are the custodians of culture and tribes no way because they fucking useless people are fucking useless we need to have real conversations with legal minds what are we doing what are we actually doing you guys want to have sex you're free to have sex don't need to sign anything you don't need to show guys are free to have children don't have to sign anything families show but now this thing of cohabitation versus civil unions versus customary marriages. What do they mean? What are the rights and responsibilities and obligations of cohabitation, living with someone? And if it's a woman that you're sleeping with, sure. But what if it's a gent? What if I have a flatmate? Umchit, I've been cohabiting with. We're not sleeping with each other. I'm not gay. But I've been living with him for two years and I die. Is he entitled to 50% of my stuff? Let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation about customary marriage. Who gets to decide and dictate? What are the laws and the agreements today? And why is a woman still seen as lesser than? And she needs to be paid a lot for. Men are using the same laws that women hate to smash and scam women. Men demanding spousal maintenance, alimony. And women are up in arms. But it's the same fucking laws that women have been using to scam men. Yo, Chomi, if you can just get pregnant, if you can just get a ring, ooh, then you... He won't, he won't cheat. If he cheats, punish him. Punish him, girl. Get a lawyer and take half his shit to daggy you. Eh? Who does he think he is? It's fine when you're scamming men. When men scam you, it's a fucking abomination. It's the same shit. But what the fuck are we doing? Co-parenting. Going to a children's court. Families and the roles that they play or do not play. People that selectively choose culture. You're going to be disrespecting my ancestors if you don't pay damages in Kaulu. But you... You disrespected your ancestors by sleeping with men that you hadn't married. Where were your ancestors then, my dear? Morning after pills, the patch, the implant, the loop, morning afters, abortions. Where the fuck were your ancestors then? Where was the disrespect of culture then? Did you ask your mom and your dad before you slept with a man? No. Now the man is disrespecting your ancestors by refusing to pay damages. Refusing because he doesn't have the money. He's broke like you. But men must magically get money from somewhere. And the parents all are not contributing to these conversations. Because they're just as stupid. They're just as retarded in their thinking. 
And your kings and your chiefs are nowhere. Your pastors are nowhere. Your educations, your, your, your honors and your master's degrees are nowhere, boy. We need to have conversations. We need to rethink how we, we're having unions and being together and whatever. It's, it's very upsetting and triggering for a person like myself because you constantly have to counsel people that literally got into a car without a seatbelt and were speeding at 160 kilometers an hour and sped into a wall. And now they're limping on a wheelchair and now I must feel sorry for them. And I'm like, who told you this? No, according to culture, I'm meant to not put on my seatbelt. No, uh, you know, some of the smartest people in the world, they speed at 160 kilometers an hour. No, but to my mom was like, you must drive into the wall. It's part of being a woman. And I'm like, nah. At some point, you need to take accountability. Because you have a brain. You're not putting your hand in the fire. So why are you agreeing to bullshit? Siswami, you're liberated. You're a feminist. How can you allow a man to pay your family money to be with you? He didn't pay money to sleep with you. And he's not entitled to your body. You have agency. So what is he paying for? What culture is this that you're claiming? Where was this culture when you were living the rest of your life? Where was your, your Jesus and your God when you're making all these decisions? You're a flip-flopper. You're a hypocrite. You don't know where you stand. And that's why no one takes you seriously. That's why men will scam you. You'll go and you get married because, oh, you want to be respected as Mrs. What right? Look at my ring. Ooh, Beyonce. Oh, I'm a singer, ladies. But now you're singing Flames. Letoya Makene. Lerato, of course. Luckily, she won the case. Bianca Naidu. Barbie Mloy. So many women being scammed by South African men, foreign men, white men. Because you guys actually don't know where you stand and you don't have your beliefs and your, and, and your, your principles in check. And the men are also dizzy themselves. And they're also getting scammed by women. And they want us to feel sorry for them. Hey, Vita, I was trying to do the right thing. You're seeing flames now, my boy. You're seeing flames now. And it's all on you. I hate the concept of marriage in 2022 because it is not rooted in love. It is not rooted in commitment. It is not rooted in building. It is rooted in the management of assets and money. Upon divorce. Upon divorce. And it discriminates against other practical role players in your life. And we're not having these conversations. And some of the lawyers and some of the magistrates and the judges, they don't know what they're talking about. And our law, which is written in black and white, is not clear. And the custodians of all these things are nowhere to be seen. All you're left with is yourself. And you've lost money and you're miserable and you're depressed and you're committing suicide. And then we have to go and bury you. And we're not having, even at your funeral, we're not having real conversations of what happened and what led to this tragedy and who is responsible. We need to have these conversations. Pin you all the black pen. Have a great day.